Thomas Gift is a U.S. politics specialist uh, and associate professor at UCL in London. He joins me now there for, for a bit more on, on this anniversary today. Thomas, a, a series of remembrance events are set to be attended by Democrats today. There'll be a speech by the president, Joe Biden, but almost every Republican on Capitol Hill will be absent. What does that say about just how polarized America still is today? Well, it's striking, I think, how little things have changed since one year ago. Trump isn't in power, but the U.S. is arguably even more polarized now than it was before Joe Biden took office. And in lots of ways, I think that reflects the self-perpetuating momentum of the Trumpist movement. You know, Trumpism really hijacked the Republican Party. Republican politicians became frightened of their own voters. And as a result, there's been virtually no pushback on one side of the partisan aisle to the kinds of dogmas that more extreme elements of America's political right continue to espouse. And we see this in the data. A Washington Post poll just found that about 40 percent of Republican voters now think that violence against the government is justified. CBS poll reported that almost 20 percent of all Americans approved of what happened at the Capitol last year. So these aren't trivial fractions of the electorate, even if most Republican voters don't subscribe to kinds of far-right views that ultimately led to the violence. Um, and it's hard to govern, and it's hard to hold a country together when the nation is so polarized about the basic integrity of the political system. Now, in the meantime, there is still an investigation into the events of January 6th that's underway. Could any clarity come out of that so far? Well, you know, I think one of the interesting things about January 6th is that people could really see it for their own eyes. I mean, there are all sorts of things that may have gone on behind the scenes, and that's one of the things that this House Select Committee is charged with doing. Some of that information came out during uh, Trump's second impeachment trial, but there's still reams and reams of information, communiques, documents, and, and other information that uh, this committee is trying to get to the bottom of. But I'm really skeptical that anything that it may find is going to budge public opinion very much on this question, because I think Americans have pretty much made up their minds about what they think of both Donald Trump and January 6th in particular. Donald Trump, of course, continues to label this uh, House Select Committee as a partisan exercise, as a witch hunt, you know, using his, his typical language. So I think for Republican voters who are listening to that, they're not going to find much of it credible. Do you think there's any chance that investigation could reach the former president, Donald Trump? Uh, you know, that's ultimately going to be a decision for the Department of Justice. I think um, this is largely a political question more than a legal question. Um, and I think uh, unless there's kind of a slam dunk case and new information is divulged that we weren't aware of before, that Donald Trump had hard knowledge of what was going to happen on January 6th uh, before it happened, then I, I think uh, he's probably going to be immune to any sort of legal charges. But again, the political fallout from this is really the big question. We did see that come to fruition with his second impeachment trial. Um, but in terms of the legal aspects, I really doubt that this is going to affect him. Thomas, just to wrap up, you talk about the political fallout and this attack on Congress really raised so many concerns for many about the future of American democracy. What do you think? Should we be worried? Well, I mean, January 6th really represented the attempted rupturing of American democracy. Um, and to that point, uh, Trump had for four years shattered all sorts of executive norms that have been standard for U.S. politics, uh, pushing the big lie, uh, espousing the notion that we can't trust uh, American elections. You know, the U.S. political system held, it was resilient, uh, but January 6th really posed the ultimate stress test on it. Um, and I think the country is going to continue to deal with the aftershocks of January 6th for some time. I still think that America fundamentally is strong. Democratic institutions are, are strong. But it's a constant reminder that democracy can't be taken for granted, and we always need to be vigilant. All right, Thomas, thanks so much for taking the time to speak to us. Thomas Giff there, U.S. politics specialist. Thanks. Thank you.